Hi, today I'm going to talk about how I designed and laser cut this Dungeon Master screen for Dungeons and Dragons. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And a couple of weeks ago, I did a review of the We Create Vision Diode Laser Cutter, my new laser cutter. And this is the first real project I've done on the laser cutter, and it did a great job. This is a Dungeon Master screen, at least that's the way I'm, uh, I've designed it to be used. But it is just a little folding screen. You could put anything in the panels you wanted. You could use it as a backdrop for a shelf or a display or something. So it has a variety of uses. Now, the way a Dungeon Master uses this is it gives them privacy so they can conduct their session with doing things in secret behind the screen. But also the screen holds a lot of information for them. So I designed each of these panels to be large enough to hold one of these heavy duty sheet protectors. So the Dungeon Master can slide in four sheets of information that he can use during the session. I just put these on with double sided um, clear removable adhesive. So this was designed, the screen itself was designed in Adobe Illustrator. The dragon image was done using AI. I tried out three different AI programs. The one that's embedded in the We Create Make It software. The one that's now embedded in Adobe Illustrator and Dolly 3, which is what I've been using in my past videos on, on using AI to design for laser cutters. And of the three, all three of them could do really nice dragons, but only Dolly 3 was advanced enough to be able to do what I asked it to do, which is to take a dragon and, and stretch it out across two panels with a clean cut in the middle. And it did those two panels exactly for me. All I had to do was engrave them. Now, I would like to point out <laughs> that this has the hallmark of AI uh, design here because this dragon has five feet and his tail is in a place he couldn't possibly have a tail. Now, I could have fixed that in Illustrator because I'm pretty good at Illustrator, but I didn't even want to try because I just, I just thought it was so classic. I mean, if this is not a fantasy dragon, I don't know what is. So uh, I'll show you using AI to come up with that image and engraving it. On the sides here, we have two really colorful, beautiful panels. Uh, these were cut from a single sheet of plywood from a collection of professionally painted, solid and patterned uh, wood that we create cells. And they sent me some samples and, and I immediately put them to use. So that's where they came from. Those panels are double-sided. The color is the same on both sides. Not important in my application because I'm covering it up with the Dungeon Master information, but it might be important to you for something that you're making. So I'll show you how I designed it in Illustrator. I'll show cutting it uh, and engraving on the Vision laser cutter, and I'll show assembly. It does have these hinges in it. I had to design for the hinges and had to be careful how I uh, put them on. So I'll show all of that in this episode. So this is my AI session in Dolly 3. I asked for a black silhouette of a simplified Chinese dragon flying horizontally across the image against a stark white background. And the first one's very nice. I mean, it's got four legs and a tail in the right place. But it's not easy to see where I'm going to split that in the middle. So I tried something I had no idea if it would work or not because I've never seen anybody do it. I asked for it to be drawn on two panels with a clean break in the middle. And this was its first attempt. Uh, the dragon's a little crazy. Um, this is the second attempt. It's got all this circular looping thing going on. So it's lost the concept of stretching it horizontally across the two panels. Um, weird numbers of legs and tail. So I ask it to try again and making sure it has four legs. And now it gives me a triptych, even though it still claims it's on two panels. So I say try again and uh, make sure it's two equal size panels and your last attempt had three. And this was what it gave me, still all clumped up in the middle of the image. 
So now I say redo with the dragon stretched horizontally across the two panels. And this is the image I got at that point, and it's the image that I used. I downloaded it, and in Photoshop, I split it into two separate panels. And this is the example of the left panel. I did place these into Illustrator and run an image trace to get a pure vector version of it. I did have two external references for the frame. I had a, actually took a picture of the hinge, put it to scale, and drew over it. And then this other one here is the size of that sheet protector, so I can make sure that the panel is big enough to hold it. The frame has three layers, a front and a back and a middle section. Here's how the hinges fit onto the frame. I did engrave the location of the screw holes. Let's look at those layers individually. So the front and the back was originally four separate pieces. These are inch wide uh, strips. The middle layer is only three quarters of an inch wide and that leaves a quarter inch deep pocket for the panels to be inserted. No need to glue them in place, they're just held there. When I tested this design though, it was really just too hard to assemble. So I changed it so that that front frame is a solid piece. And then this is the cut sheet for a single panel. It fits on a 12 by 18 piece of wood. The newest update to the We Create Make It software has had some important improvements. And one is that when you import an SVG, it will keep track of the different colors in the drawing, which it didn't used to do. So all you need to do is to pick a color, like I'm going to go ahead and pick all of the blue here in this drawing. And then I'm going to tell it that I want that to be a fill and grave. And I picked a pretty dark one. And then the red line is a cut line. And those are the defaults for cutting. Then you put the board in and you tell it to refresh. And now you can see the board. And I'm going to try to cut both of these panels out of a single 18 by 12 inch sheet of plywood. So I move it as far to the left as I can. Then all I need to do is to run the autofocus. So I'll click on that. It'll take it a minute because the head is physically going over to the location of the drawing and, and doing autofocus. When it is finished with that, the next step is to click on start. And it will tell you how long it's going to take, and it actually did an excellent job on the estimated time on this. It was right on target with 33 minutes. Then you push the button on the machine and it gets started. This is real-time raster or fill engraving, and it's the actual noise level that you'll hear. And here it is cutting that panel out once again at normal speed and the actual sound level. And both panels did easily fit on that. And here's that panel finished. It's beautiful. I did a little light sanding on these, but really not much was required at all. And then I did a clear coat. Another improvement in the Make It software is you can choose to only output parts of the drawing. So I used the exact same drawing to cut these colored panels. I just didn't send the engraving to the machine. I really love this painted plywood. I think it takes the project to a whole nother level. Here I am cutting one of the four panel frames. I saw on a video on YouTube that the Vision currently has a, a issue where this air hose will get sliced from running back and forth against this piece of metal. So what I did is I found some uh, thin adhesive backed felt strip in my shop and I just put that over that edge, attached it to the front, pushed it to the back, and it's working great. I stained the fronts and backs of the frames using a wipe-on stain that's very similar to the color of the engraving and the edges. I glued it together in two steps. So the first step was to glue the middle to the solid one-piece front, and I just clamped those and let that dry. Then the next step was to just lay in the proper panel and glue on the other side and clamp that up. And it was really important when I was doing this to stay organized because 
I, from the beginning, had put all the parts for any given panel together, and I kept them together through the whole process. Finally, I had the four panels together, and I let these dry overnight. I had some uneven edges, so I touched those up on my belt sander, and then I touched those spots up with the dark stain. Let's talk about the hinges. So I bought some hinges online, and I had to make sure that the length of the screws was less than the 3 eighths of the, an inch that the wood was going to be. The screen's going to bend towards the hinges, so you have, to, you have hinges in the middle front, but the other two sets of hinges are on the back. I used a tiny cordless hand drill, and that worked great for this project. I pre-drilled the top panel holes only on the left hand side and then I put those screws in place and drilled the other two holes with the other panel in the correct position. This is what the screen looks like from the back so you can see those double sided uh, colorful panels. The backs of the dragon panels are clear coated as well and here's what the screen looks like when it's totally folded up. I really love this project and a diode laser cutter is totally up to the task of producing something that looks this nice. I have several other projects lined up for my We Create Vision laser cutter, so if you're interested in seeing those, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with your friends.